Welcome back, people. Today I am going to breakfast, start my day. It's gonna be great. A place called First Watch. If you haven't been there, it's legit. It's really good. As always, gotta wake myself up. Some of that, some of that hot water, hot shower water. You know, you know what I'm saying. Good morning, vlog. <laughs> Melody loves to play on her bed. Say good morning. Say bye bye. Say bye bye, Dad. Dad, he's going to breakfast. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Three <laughs> 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 of that is the Rams won't be able to run the ball. They're gonna have to throw it. The there it is. First watch, baby. All right, done with breakfast. And uh, the wifey's calling. Thank you, Austin, for some, some good grub, some good conversation. Now to the rest of this Thursday. Let's see. Ah. Hey. It's ready. Okay. Hello, beautiful. Made it to the park, and yeah, made it to the park. It's, it's shaped, shaped like a boot. Here, uh, try to guess. Oh. <laughs> what is that shape? <laughs> I don't know. Let me let me put it this way. I like to call it Little Italy. Um, it's actually a really cool place to run. It's about it's about one and a half miles around the whole park, and it's a really cool little shape. Um, but yeah, I've had some good runs here and I like it here a lot, but today we're just gonna walk and enjoy this really beautiful day. And maybe swing the baby? Yep. Is there a swing? If they got a good one. There's multiple playgrounds, so we'll have to check it out. Good job! <laughs> Check it out. I think that's a hawk or something. Sorry, Mako. Ah, uh, hey. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Just one second. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah you know. Okay. okay, I'm gonna get a large strawberry limeade. We secured the bag. Yes. I got a cherry slush with nerds. Gives it a little, you know, sourness to it. Yeah. I get. And I got a strawberry limeade. Blink. Y'all, get on the hype train. Seriously, the soft pretzel twist at Sonic. <laughs> Do you like this? Is legit. The cheese sauce. It's pretty good too. Cutie.
good. Another good Thursday. Sipping some red hibiscus tea. And um, yeah, I got to spend a good time with the girls. Just hanging out. Melody is at the door right now, the <laughs> glass. She's looking at me. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to share a little bit about my running history, what really the last 10 years have looked like. And of course I could go into levels and levels of detail, but I'll try to keep it shorter. My uh, my introduction to running was, was uh, running seventh grade track. <laughs> my dad told me, He's like, oh yeah, I did track when I was when I was younger, and and uh, yeah, it's really fun. So, so I don't know. I I thought about trying out track, and it was hilarious thinking about my 13 year old self running the 800 in the mile. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know like what times I ran, but I do remember the thing about seventh grade that was really cool was just the meets. The meets were awesome. Yeah, I had that that seventh grade season and then I liked it enough to do it again in eighth grade and then that by that time I'd grown a little bit and I again doing maybe they I guess I still did the 800 I don't remember but I did the mile again and and yeah my my mile got time got better and I was more passionate about that race I really enjoyed it and then I had a similar discovery whole I don't know like learning what a sport is type of thing when I was going to freshman year and was talking about doing cross country. And so I did cross country for the first time. It went great. And then I got injured during basketball my freshman year. So I didn't even get to, I didn't even get to do track freshman year. I was hurt and I was recovering from my injury. That was a whole ordeal. It was not, not a very good season of my life, but made me really miss track. Like, I liked the cross country part, made me really miss track. But anyway, the rest of high school was the process of just falling more in love with the sport of running. And of course, uh, getting back on the track. Sophomore year was amazing, it was an amazing season. And then learned to love the cross country course more. After my sophomore track season, I joined a club outside of my school. And I don't know, that would really take me the next level or so I thought and ended up that it did. And I went to some summer camps with uh, involving my club coach where I got to meet more runners who were kind of in, in my my same boat uh, who were just really serious about it. And so that metastasized and, and led to me thinking about running a college where I uh, went through the process of, of communicating with D3 and D2 coaches um, when I was choosing a school to go to. And I got accepted by plenty of these schools because I had done well enough in school in my academics. Um, but yeah, then it came down to choosing and I, I definitely was struck differently when I met with uh, DBU and just the, the thing that they had going on there at Dallas Baptist University. The program that they had going on over there, the coaches, everything was just top notch, especially compared to some of these other schools I was looking at. And so it felt like a natural fit that I would go there and it'd still be kind of close to home and could visit my family on the weekend or just whenever I needed to. <clears throat> and uh, little did I know that going to that school meant so much more than just running for me because I, I, I found that I could major in major in something that I was really uh, skilled and talented at already, which was music. And so I majored in music and then not that long into my freshman year, I met my wife, who, the woman who is now my wife. Um, and so yeah, it, it ended up being the right call and my, my college running itself was, was, was a wake up call because you know, you at my small private school, I did, I did really well and I was the best when I left but when you go to college you're you're rarely the best when you come into a college program anywhere so I I uh, I joined it was quickly humbled uh, about being kind of at the bottom of the totem pole but I just learned what it meant to to train to follow to follow the words of a good coach and to trust your coach um, and so yeah, it was it was an awesome experience that I'll never forget. 
um, getting to run college and it was cut short I I had to redshirt my my first cross-country season due to another injury and then and then my junior year track season was canceled due to the pandemic and everything and, and then the the uh, summer following <laughs> melody the summer following junior year I got married and and uh, started my married life and soon after my my baby girl was born so so it was kind of a bittersweet end that it was kind of cut so short and I didn't get to really have closure with the you know with like a a senior year season type of thing but let's say about six months to a year after getting married I was able to train for my my latest um, my latest race which was the Dallas half marathon where I got 10th place and uh, I beat my goal time of an hour and 15 minutes by about two minutes um, finishing in an hour 13 18 so it was really just a awesome experience getting to come back to running and to train hard and to to build up all the way to December and have the payoff that it did um, but yeah I'm, I'm I'm using this latest season as a, a stepping stone uh, into wherever I'm going and, and I'm still experiencing a bit of a pause right now but it's it's a good pause it's a pause that my body needs and my hope is that I can run uh, more halves in the future and sometime at some point build up to a full marathon and uh, try to try to beat my old granddad's uh, personal best which is two hours and 32 minutes which is smoking uh, but would love if uh, someday I could reach that and hold the family family title for a while until maybe one of my kids breaks it. Um, but but yeah, that's that's my running history. Running for ten years. Here's to ten more.